Hello and welcome to another of Pepper's Moustache Musings. Tonight, oh my god, look at my hair. It is long. Tonight I'm going to stash talk the power that women have and the, the power that they um, misuse. And I'm talking about how some women would falsely accuse people of rape, um, sexual harassment, uh, job inequality, and a um, few other things. Lah. But I'm just going to concentrate on just a few things. <clears throat> Again, all these opinions are my opinion. And um, if you have a different, a different view, you are welcome to leave a comment below and I'll try and answer them uh, in my next uh, video. But hopefully you'll agree with me. Lah. Right, a bit of background. For centuries, no, I think for millennia, I think, that women have been always been the second class citizen. Husbands were always the head of the household, women were never the head of a household. In some instances, in some cultures maybe, but in general, women were just seen as second class citizens. Their job was to stay at home, take care of the kids, provide for the husband and um, support him. And it's never the other way around. And that's well, men held all the power, men held all the decision making. So where does that leave women? Nowhere. And yet they make up half of the world's population. So kind of unfair that their voices are not, are not heard, not even considered. <clears throat> for a long, long time, men went out to vote for governments and women were deemed unworthy of uh, voting because everybody thought that they would just vote for the wrong candidate. Um, lucky for, for us, um, groups like the suffragettes did a lot, sacrificed a lot to ensure that women also got the vote. So, uh, I'd like to just jump in and get on with the topic at hand. When, whenever a woman accuses someone of rape, it's usually a or sexual harassment. Okay, let's just go with sexual harassment first because it's a very grey area. <laughs> so when a woman uh, accuses a man of sexual harassment is usually a case of your word against mine, your story versus my story. So because of that, a lot of sexual harassment cases are dropped. They are not pursued because it's really just a case of the victim's story um, against the uh, alleged perpetrator's version. But um, after um, um, cases like um, Weinstein and, um, and like Bill Cosby and all these famous people who were found guilty of rape and sexual harassment, and so the tables the tables turned so now people tend to believe the woman's story and it is now the job of the accused to prove that you're innocent last time he used to be innocent until proven guilty but now it's the other way around and uh, the story of that's given by the victim, which is usually a woman, um, that's believed wholesale, without question. The woman is telling the truth, 
and the man must be the one who's lying about the whole situation to try and save his neck. And I think that that's wrong. Before I started this talk, I kind of knew what I wanted to talk about. And then I thought, you know what, maybe there are some statistics that I could look up and um, just to just to support what I what I think is, is going on because I think that women are not going to just accuse people of sexual harassment and rape these, these are really big accusations these are not small accusations so I don't think a, women would just simply accuse a person of such heinous crimes to my astonishment it seems many many surveys and uh, research show that women this uh, false false accusation um, stand at about eight eight percent of all rape accusations now that is worrying some studies have shown that the number can go as high as 35 percent or more I, that is insane so my question is why do women why would some women well according to the last uh, data that i gave gave you why would 35 out of 100 women who accuse someone of heinous crimes like rape or sexual harassment why would why would they do that why would they falsely accuse another person the first reason that came to my mind is the old saying about power. You know the old saying about, uh, about power? That power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. So before everybody was deemed innocent until proven guilty. But then um, about 10 15 years ago maybe, maybe 10 years ago that started to change <clears throat> now people say you have to believe the woman's story whether she can prove it or not is a different matter and uh, well I can understand that it's difficult to, to um, prove that a man had molested you let's say as your partner as the two of you were passing uh, each other in the office on the corridors, a lonely corridor in the office so he touched your butt or he made a, a remark to you so how are you going to prove it? Uh, unless you got cameras even then um, it's going to be difficult to prove it well I understand that it's very distressing for the victim. So you can imagine if uh, you can now molest in a, and there was no witnesses. So now you try to complain to your boss or to the HR department or to a disciplinary committee and they're, they're saying, well, there's no proof. So we can't do anything for you. So you you will feel helpless. Lah. This is the same kind of feeling you get when some uh, your house get your house gets broken into and then you go to the police and you all, you all know lah. everybody will say police tak guna tak buat kerja because it's so difficult to catch the guy you, do, you didn't see him he didn't leave any clues as to who he is so how to catch this 
person who broke into your house, you know. So police can't do much, but what they can do is they can just file your case and uh, you'll just be another statistic. Lah. So for many years, I suppose, women also talk the same. Lah. Um, so they also feel, what's the point of of uh, making a report when uh, nothing ever get done, you know. But about, like I said, about 10 years ago, um, people started to say, hey, let's take the women seriously and uh, let's assume that they are, they are telling the truth and not making the stories up. <clears throat> and in the case of Harvey Weinstein, I know I got his surname right, but I'm not sure if I got his first name right. I'm quite, I think, um, I think I got his, uh, his first name right. Harvey Weinstein. So when a few people, a few actresses came forward to recount their horror tales with Harvey Weinstein, how he had solicited sex from them in exchange for movie roles or um, parts in movies or favours. So people started to look into his um, into more victims and by golly seems like he had, had sex and or molested or taken advantage of half the women in Hollywood and just terrible lah. so that's a good thing because if we didn't believe the first few women who came forward to complain about this very powerful man in society, in society we would not have uncovered this shameful and horrible truth and um, the same for uh, Bill Cosby as well if that his victim um, had not come forward and fought for justice, she would just been forgotten and Bill Cosby would have just walked free. But because of because she was taken seriously, so even though Bill Cosby is at that time was I think it was in his seventies, justice was served. And again for her in the case of Jimmy Savile, who had molested, allegedly, close to 500 underage girls, which that's... I can't even wrap my head around that, that number. He had passed away, of course, but at least he's exposed for who he is, the monster that he is. So, on the strength of believing women, I suppose some women have uh, decided to take advantage of of um, of that power, the power of being believed and not being dismissed. So why not? So now that you've got this power so I suppose some would misuse it well I don't don't doubt that power will, will be misused however the amount of women who falsely accuse is staggering 35% is insane <clears throat> if we if the number was very close to zero let's say one percent or half percent i wouldn't bet an eye i think that yeah there will be people who will lie you know ex-girlfriends maybe ex-wives um, a disgruntled um, colleague let's say you received a promotion and she did not so she accuse you of taking advantage of her sexually just to get a bit of revenge just to put a bit of just to throw the spanner into your 
your into the works just to trip you up I can understand that lah. if it's half percent one percent that, that one is I suppose it's normal lah, human nature lah. but at 35 percent that's crazy even at eight percent I think that's crazy imagine now, out of the hundred people being accused of rape or um, sexual misconduct eight of eight of them are actually innocent innocent victims being accused for whatever reason or if you take the higher number over 30 percent 35 percent 35 out of a hundred people are accused of rape or sexual harassment you know what the consequences of this for the accused HR and companies would terminate their services so if it's a, a father he would lose his income to provide for his family all because of some petty jealousy or a person a woman who's seeking revenge or satisfaction maybe so accused him of this made him lose his job uh, you don't know if you remember a few videos ago <clears throat> I made about that woman who tweeted um, about that Nobel Prize winner who made a sexist joke and remember I told you the reason why she tweeted it was because she could she knew that she had the power to take down a prestigious person a person of distinction so she just did it didn't think much about the consequences to the man to the community and ultimately to her to herself I've uh, also seen videos of um, girls I'm thinking of this one particular in incident where there were three girls who took a taxi or an, an uber to for a night out or maybe to go home or something and they refused to pay the driver and they told him that if he didn't let them out of the car and forget the fare they would threaten to go to the police station and accuse him of rape or something to that effect so usually today when a man is threatened like that the man usually gives in because I told you people will just believe the woman and assume that she's telling the truth and the man is the one who's uh, lying so you can't win in this situation if you're a man you'll win if you're a woman so normally they'll just let it go but lucky for this guy this driver he had a backward facing camera and it recorded the entire accusation and so he got away with it if he had not had that camera and it was one of those my word against your word I can tell you Uber would have taken action against that driver he would have lost his um, job as a driver he might have had to pay some sort of uh, compensation to the three girls who had falsely accused him this is the state that we are living in <clears throat> where justice has turned it the other way around now we don't even need any evidence just believe the woman and um, don't believe the man I think this is this is wrong this is totally wrong I think that it does not even help women in general it will just make women look like born liars 
So, and this doesn't just stop at the um, rape accusation and sexual harassment um, education uh, level. Hi, good evening. Once women are known as liars, where would they stop? What, what else would they lie about? You really lie about, about being raped. You really lie about being sexually harassed and molested. So, you probably will lie about other things as well but that are deemed not as terrible as rape or sexual harassment. So, as you can see, it's actually not a good thing for, for women to be, to be known as false accusers. I think that if you want to keep this in check, there must be a balance. I think that we should believe women when they say that they had been raped or sexually molested or whatever. I'm thinking along the lines of my own daughter, if she came back home and told me that her teacher had touched her inappropriately, I will never ever tell her it's probably your imagination lah. or let's not take any action because it's really difficult to prove that he had done this because after all the two of you were together um, alone in the um, room or the assigned lab or whatever um, or worse um, let's not um, let's not um, upset the the school lah, you know, let's not make any trouble lah. I think that's that's not the way to do it. I think I think that the first thing I would do is of course I'll believe my daughter lah. If she, my daughter said that she had been sexually molested by her teacher, this is this is something big, you know. And should be investigated. You can you can bet that I will be on my way to the school immediately to talk to the headmaster. So yes, we should believe women and victims when they say that they something has happened to them. <clears throat> and this goes for anyone, children, even men who feel that they had uh, been wrong, then I think that we should we should believe them first and then investigate and try to find some sort of proof in order to catch the 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 the, the, the person and um, and punish the per the person so that, that 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 kind of behavior is not repeated, it is not tolerated. However, I think that if the victim uh, the accused can show that the victim, uh, yeah, the alleged victim is lying, then I think that the alleged victim should pay some sort of price. This is to prevent people from falsely accusing another person, an innocent person. And uh, a couple of weeks ago, I think, it was, I saw a video of, if I'm not mistaken, it was, a student who was studying in the US and he um, he had come he had gone to the US to study and he was out um, partying with some friends and that included girls and he was accused of uh, rape or sexual advances by one of the girls lucky for him a video of him and the girl was captured by the club's uh, cameras. So it was quite clear to anyone watching the video 
that the girl was just as frisky as um, as him, <laughs> and so he could prove his innocence. He he had not uh, taken advantage of the girl, but the girl was quite willing to um, uh, be how do you say in a party mood uh, with him. So in this case, then because the girl had accused him, then I think that the girl should be punished. The girl should be fined or um, have some sort of action taken against her. Because if if it was it there was no proof to protect the accused, I can tell you the accused would probably would have been expelled from school, from the university, and um, he would have to um, live with this shame of this false edu- uh, accusation. So I think that there should be severe punishment because the accusation is not a small edu- accusation. These kinds of accusations accusations can destroy careers if they can destroy lives so therefore if you are caught lying or falsely accusing someone then you should pay the same price as uh, what the accused would have had to pay so the bigger your accusation then the bigger the punishment for you if, if you are um, deemed if you're caught um, falsely accusing someone. What I worry is that in this, if we continue this kind of trend where we wholeheartedly believe um, women and <clears throat> pass judgment without looking at the facts or without trying to prove that it is what she says it is, then there's no justice. The, this kind of justice is this ridiculous kind of justice. If we should, I think that every victim should be believed first, then it should be investigated and and then, if uh, once we find the supporting facts, then we take the appropriate action. But if there is no, um, we are unable to um, find evidence of wrongdoing, then that case should be filed for future references, future reference, future use, like in the case of Harvey Weinstein. I think it's Harvey. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's I think that's all that I can think of to talk about tonight. Okay. If you like my talks, hope you will give me a thumbs up in the on my video and uh, maybe even share or subscribe to my ch- other interesting topics to talk about in my next walk. Okay, see you then.